Hello and welcome my spinal hygiene doctors, friends, colleagues. Uh, hope y'all are doing great. Hope you had a great 4th of July. And uh, as we get started here, I'm just going to make sure that this is posted, that we're live. Um, I'm going to post it to our Facebook page, the private group Facebook page. Hopefully uh, you are, have been a part of that. If you notice my emails, they go out. The link at the bottom of the email. Um, that will get you that that will allow you to join the private Facebook group. Okay, and um, let me just check the email that went out. Yep, email went out that we are starting, and I'm gonna paste into that group and let everybody know that we're starting. That uh, it's a member of the group it should be you guys basically. Um, but sometimes I think it's easier if you get a notification. Um, what did I do? Oh, I posted a wrong thing here. Um, today we're going to actually be talking about, um, structuring your talk. You know, I know a lot of you are finally getting in there. You're scheduling your workshops. You've got workshops right in front of you. I know uh, several of you have, I've talked to you. Congratulations, by the way, for getting that done. That's the hardest part. And we're going to train on. Uh, we're going to train today on your actual presentation. Let me see if uh, everybody is here on the call, live with us, the live class. I'm going to refresh the screen. Great, got a couple people here. Um, if you have trouble with audio, watching anything, just let me know, and um, we will uh, will be able to address that. So let me see if I can actually post. Um, this live YouTube because I go I go live on YouTube so that I can share my screen. I know that there are some softwares on Facebook that will allow me to. Um, yeah, I think it's going to let me actually post this live stream in there. Sweet. Now you can watch live from the Facebook page. How cool is that? What's this? Yeah, maybe we'll just start doing that. Um, I didn't realize I could do that. Even I'm learning technology every day, even though I've been using YouTube Live for a long time now. So uh, here's, what, here's what we're going to train on. Creating and structuring your presentation. And realize that your presentation is... Um, it's going to be different than mine. It's going to be different than everybody else's on here. It's, you're going to make it your own, and you should. You should definitely do that. Now, I, I do not think that you should be 100% prepared and um, you know, solid and, and seasoned and, and you know, given your presentation a million times before you schedule the talk. I don't. I think you should schedule the talk before you're completely ready to give a presentation. Um, I, I think if you just do it, you're going to do amazing. You're going to do great. Just have the confidence that literally you, you don't even need my PowerPoint, my presentation, my outline. You could go in right now. If I said, Hey, I need you to speak in five minutes. I need you to speak. You could do it right now. Even if you have nothing prepared because you've been doing this for years. You, you've been doing this through chiropractic school. You've been watching on these coaching trainings. You could go in and you could say, look guys, the spine should be in a certain alignment. It should be straight from the front. It should have natural curves on the side. So many people come in, we find that it's not in that good alignment. That puts pressure on nerves. That's, that begins to cause symptoms in the body. And people end up getting a pill, a potion, or a lotion because they're trying to treat these symptoms. And does that really correct their alignment? No. So they end up taking this pill for the rest of life or worse, they take that pill. It causes side effects. So they have to get on another pill. So then they have to get on another pill. They wind up like my mom who passed away taking 21 prescription medications at the age of 47. That's why 
I do what I do. That's why I'm standing here in front of you speaking today. And that's why I want to offer you an examination, an examination in my office. So you can come in, you can sit down with me and we can find out if you have damaging stress in your spine called subluxation that's causing the symptoms that you're, you're having right now. And we can even check your family to make sure they don't have it because you can have it for a long time without even knowing it. Now, look at that. I did. I just did a presentation for like, that was like two minutes and we could close them. So I, you know, I work a lot with Roberto Monaco and I do not think that you have to speak for an hour uh, to make an impact. And he doesn't either. And he, he's, he, in fact, uh, my dinner, I recorded a dinner that I sent to him. In fact, the dinner that's in uh, the members area, I recorded that and sent it to Roberto to critique. And he was like, I love that it's only 26 minutes. Because you don't have to speak for 45 minutes to be able to move somebody into action. You can, it can be as short. In fact, I think it's better if, as long as it's powerful, that it's shorter and to the point. And I've learned a lot of things from doing these dinners and lunch and learns over the years, hundreds of them a year. And I, I want to share some really cool tips and strategies with you today. Now, before we jump into my actual talk and outline, and I'll show you, you know, how we structure it from, and I learned a lot of this from Roberto. So Cairo Speaking Club is a really cool program that Roberto does that I'm a part of, um, and it's two ninety seven a month. So just like this program, the Spinal Hygiene Doctor program is two ninety seven a month, and uh, it's well worth your investment. So Cairo, uh, Cairo Speaking Club, I feel like is worth my investment as well, and and you may want to check that out also. Uh, but Roberto does a great job of, of teaching um, how to do talks. Um, basically, he covers the opening, preframe, body, uh, pre-close, and close. All right. So you'll notice even in the PowerPoints that are inside our members area, there's an opening, there's a, um, a preframe, a body, a pre-close, and a close. And we're going to cover that today as well. Let's see if we have anybody on, by the way, if you're watching live in Facebook or if you're watching live on the live class website, um, you'll be able to post questions there and I'll make sure that we, we get them answered. All right. Now I'm going to share my screen with you because I want to show you in the members area where you find the PowerPoints. Now I think you have three options. Okay. When you are coming up with your talk that you're going to do for lunch and learns, I think you have three options. Number one, you can use the uh, ergonomic PowerPoint, which I'm completely, you know, we're always updating and using, but a lot of people can get into, um, into um, the actual place of business because they're going to talk about ergonomics. And I think that's important. And we're actually next week going to be training just on the ergonomic uh, PowerPoint and presentation and how you can actually um, get into businesses and, and talk about spinal hygiene and ergonomics. And a lot of those businesses want you to do that. So there's that PowerPoint presentation, which if you look in the members area, in fact, let me just share my screen and then I will, uh, I'll walk you through where that is. Okay. All right. Uh, let me find it here. Now I'm going to share my screen right here. Okay. Now, when you're logged into the members area, this is the first page that you come to. Okay. Now you'll see there's a business lecture kit, in office workshop, the posture cure, spinal hygiene products, um, live class archive. Um, okay. So now, if you'll, you could either go to the business lecture kit up here at the top menu, or you could go down here and click on business lecture kit. And then you want to go to the presentation, number six, the presentations. Okay. Now, this is. My recorded, where I, I recorded it for you, um, the, the uh, lunch and learn presentation, that one took me 37 minutes for some reason. I find when I get actually in front of people, I think I talk a lot faster, but it goes a lot faster. This is my latest one that I recorded my video uh, of the dinner, and it's only 26 minutes. You can see that here. Now, here's what I'm talking about, your spinal health and hygiene safety class. This is the ergonomic class. You can simply download uh, the flyer. And you can download the PowerPoint and you can do an ergonomic talk. That's your first option. All right. Second option, which is something I think is, is probably what you should do, especially if you're not doing an ergonomic uh, workshop, is just use the PowerPoint uh, from your in-office workshop. 
that we do. So if you scroll down, you'll see that spinal hygiene, there's three different PowerPoints you could use. This is my doctor's report, what I do for my doctor's report. This is the advanced spinal health class with x-rays, and this is the advanced spinal health class without x-rays. That's the one I would actually use if I was using a PowerPoint. Uh, this is, let me pull the PowerPoint up here. This is the PowerPoint here that you would use, and you can just kind of tweak it, change it, make it your own. I'm not going to go through this entire talk for you because I do that on the, in the members area, but this would actually teach patients, uh, not only patients, but teach people in, in their business gene and why they should take care of their spine, and then you can just end it with uh, your clothes and invite people in for the workshop. So let me get to the last here. Um, so you, this is cool because it's interactive. You could help take them through the exercises. I know I'm flipping through this fast because I'm just trying to get to the end here, right? So then you would teach them what an ideal uh, spinal hygiene day looks like and then invite them for the close, invite them in for a discounted um, exam, all right? So this is, the, this is the advanced workshop that you would give to your patients, but you could use it and tweak it if you're going to use a PowerPoint at the lunch and learn programs or even at your dinners. But um, what I want to train a little bit more on today at more on <laughs> what I want to train a little bit more on today is um, my outline for the business lecture kit. Okay. <clears throat> now if you go back to business lecture kit, the presentation the, now realize I'm in the members area right now. Um, this presentation is one that I give without a PowerPoint, okay? Now, I give it with an outline, and you can click on the presentation outline, and it will download, or will go to Dropbox here, and you can download the actual outline that I use, and that's what I use at what, this is what I take to my dinners. I actually keep this in my car, and all I do is memorize the outline of this presentation. Now, I have been getting some coaching from Roberto even since the last time I posted that, um, that talk. And so I want to share some structure and I want to share some really cool things that I use in that talk so that you can use it in yours. Now, I highly recommend that you just memorize your talk and you not do an outline when you go for lunch and learns and when you do your dinner workshops. Now, when you have an in-office advanced class for your patients, yes, by all, all means, use a PowerPoint and you don't have to memorize that. Um, now, when you go to the lunches and when you go to dinners, though, memorize the outline. You don't have to memorize your whole talk, but memorize the outline so that you can give that talk without having to bring a projector and an autonomic poster and a spine. I bring my autonomic poster on my spine. That's enough. But then the projector, the screen, and all this other stuff, and you have to depend on that. And you know that technology is going to fail if at some point. So you really need to learn the outline of it anyway. And, um, and so that's what I want to walk you through is the outline of this presentation that we do. Okay, and so we're going to walk through it. I actually have to give this again on Monday. I have a dinner with the doc this coming Monday at 7 p.m. So I have been kind of tweaking and touching up, and I have written out my outline and hand writ wrote it out so that I can memorize this outline. Now, here's the opening of the outline. It's really, really cool opening, and I started using this as an opening opening every time I do it. And it's basically it said I I I, uh, I learned this from Roberto is like you just start with a word like a strong power word okay so I would get introduced and I'd be quiet quiet you're silent for about a minute not not a minute maybe ten seconds it feels like a minute right uh, ten seconds and then I start with this word right here I go thirty one billion dollars. And that usually gets people's attention, right? That's how much the money the late, great Steve Jobs was worth when he passed away. How many of you know who Steve Jobs is? And you raise your hand because you're trying to get them to interact even right off the beginning. This is the opening, okay? So we're talking about, we're going to talk about the opening, then the pre-frame, then the body, then the pre-close, and then the close. So the opening, you want to catch their attention. How many of you know who Steve Jobs is? Yes. He's the billionaire, right, that started Apple. Now, how many of you would like to be worth $31 billion? Raise your hand. Everybody raise their hand. I'm raising my hands like me too. But 
knowing that Steve Jobs passed away in 2011 of pancreatic cancer, and right now he's buried in a cemetery in Palo Alto, California, how many of you would switch places with Steve Jobs right now, knowing that? Nobody raises their hand. Why? And then you say, why? Because your health is worth more than $31 billion. And then that's when we move into our preframe, which is like, and that's why we're going to talk about two very, very important subjects, or two, two very important aspects of your health tonight. Number one, we're going to answer one of the most important questions you can ask, and that is this, what is health? Number two is we want to show you not only what health is, but how you can keep it and how you can avoid some of the, the number one causes of death right now in the United States. How many of you think that would be valuable, right? And they're all raising their hands. And then we would go into our, uh, our pre-frame where um, we would acknowledge, and, and this is something I just started doing. Uh, and, and on behalf of Dr. of uh, Roberto's Dr. Roberto of Roberto's coaching, so I will you know record this presentation and put it in uh, with all the, all of this new stuff as well. But um, what we do is is I would say this is still part of the preframe. As I would say, you know I've done hundreds of these presentations before. We do dinner workshops every month. We have for the last eight years, and you know I've seen. The people who really get the most out of these presentations and these workshops are the people who engage. They're the people who take notes. They're the people who ask questions. So I want to encourage you, interact, engage, answer my questions, and feel free to ask questions. Because when, you, when you, we talk about going to the gym, who gets the best results? The person who hears about the gym or the person who actually goes to the gym? the person who actually goes to the gym. So same thing tonight. You're going to hear some great information. But the most important thing is that you take action and you act on the information that you get tonight. A mentor of mine once said, participation is transformation. So please participate tonight. I, I thank you. you da, 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 da. So that actually sets the pace for the audience to who they have your, your attention, you have their attention, and they know that they not only can participate, but that you encourage them that they should participate uh, in your presentation, okay? Now, that is what we would consider the, the preframe of our talk. Um, and let's see, I want to just make sure, I'm going to check the live comments every once in a while just to see if anybody places any questions. Feel free again, you guys participate. I should just use the preframe when I start these coaching calls, right? <laughs> Feel free to participate and, uh, and comment and post in here as well. All right. <clears throat> awesome. So that's the opening. We use the Steve Jobs opening. I use the Steve Jobs opening now. Uh, the preframe is basically telling them what you're going to talk about and then also maybe getting their attention, telling them that, um, that people who get the best results are the people who participate. So feel free to comment, answer my questions, and ask questions. Okay? So that's the opening. That's the preframe. Now, in the body, what I do, and you'll notice in my videos and, and in my outlines, and again, you're going to take this outline. Here's what I did. I, I, take, I created this talk from a lot of different people. Um, number one was Dr. Zeno. I actually went through his presentation and outlined it. Then I created mine, added my stories in. Uh, then I've went to, you know, speaking coaches. I had Roberto Monaco help me and I've tweaked it and changed it. And you'll do the exact same thing. And that's important because you want it to fit you. You don't want to just say it word for word on how I say it. You want it to fit you. And also, I think this is vital. You, you will never be 100% ready. Monday night when I give this presentation and dinner with the doc, I'm not going to feel 100% ready. And I'm not going to say all of this perfectly either. I'm going to leave half of it out. And then I'm going to say the other half of it, and it's going to be fine. And you know what? Some people are going to sign up, and some people aren't. And some people are going to get their life changed because of it, and some people aren't. So the main thing, is the reason why most of our coaching trainings are how to set up talks is because the main thing is you just need to schedule that first talk. Just jump into it. Even if you're not ready at all or you don't have your presentation ready, jump into it. Okay, that being said, we talked about the opening and the preframe. Um, and then let's go on to the body of your talk, okay? Now, the body of my talk is where we answer the question, 
what is health? All right. Now, um, the way I do it is I'll ask, how, um, you know, I, I always ask my patients, what is health? And the number one answer that I get back is I'm healthy if I feel good. Now, that means people are basing their health on how, they're, on how they feel. You know what the problem of that is? The problem is if you're basing your health on how you feel, you never do anything to improve your health until what? And the whole audience says, until you feel bad. Because look, we just got through in the pre-frame telling them we want them to participate. Now I'm asking them a question, boom, right off the bat. So uh, the problem with judging your health on how you feel is that you never uh, do anything to improve your health until you what? Feel bad. And that's called being reactive instead of what? And the whole audience again says, uh, it's, it's called being proactive instead of what? Or wait, sorry, reactive instead of what? And they're like proactive. And I'm saying, and if you want a long, healthy life, do you need to be proactive? Do you need to be reactive or do you need to be proactive? Always end with the one that you want them to say the answer. So I would say, if you want to live a long, healthy life, do you want to be reactive or do you want to be proactive? And the whole audience is going to say proactive. So look, just in that little sentence there, they've answered my, they've answered me three times, raised their hands like five times already, and look how much interaction we're getting from the audience right here, okay? So now I'm going to say, does anybody know the leading causes of death right now in the United States? Anybody know the top two killers? And, um, you know, somebody obviously is going to blurt out uh, cancer, right? Or I'm like, yes, cancer is number one. Anybody know number two? Heart disease. Heart disease is number two, or or vice versa, whatever it is. Um, and uh, and so I would say that's right. Heart disease or cancer. And I always speak with the utmost respect when I talk about these particular diseases because I know that there's not a person in this room who either themselves or a loved one or a family member or a friend hasn't been touched by heart disease or cancer. And I'm no different. Now, here's where I want to give an example. So anytime you talk about a disease like heart disease or cancer or something like they might not feel heart disease or cancer or whatever, you want to give an example. So I would say, um, and most people don't feel these devastating diseases until they're too late. My mom, she passed away at the age of 47. She died of a massive heart attack in the middle of her sleep. And I always tell people, you know what, if I could go back into time, if I could ask my mom that day, how do you feel? Guess what she'd say? She'd say, fine, because you don't feel chronic degenerative diseases like heart disease until it's too late. My grandfather passed away from lung cancer. Now, the, when I first, when I say lung cancer, you probably think he was a what? Everybody's going to say smoker, right? And I'm going to say, but he wasn't. So when they did a history, they looked back into his past. They discovered that he was a plumber in his 30s and 40s, and he was exposed to a chemical called asbestos. We now know that as asbestos leads to a specific type of lung cancer. But watch this. My grandfather was exposed to asbestos in his 30s or 40s. He died in his 70s of lung cancer. That means for decades, there was something inside of him growing, getting bigger, that would eventually kill him, but he never felt it. Not until it was too late. In fact, his biggest symptom was a cough. And after round, after round, after round of antibiotics and everything else, cough suppressants, everything that you could do to cover up that symptom, they finally sent him for x-rays and they saw something, right? So they sent him for MRI. They sent him for CT scan. By the time they found his lung cancer, it was stage four and he passed away six months later. So are more people dying of things they feel in this country or things they don't feel? And the whole audience says things they don't feel. Now watch, this is part of our body, but now we're, we're making people think here. We're making them think. They're like, wow, it's not really about symptoms. Number one, it's not about covering up symptoms. But number two, I might, not, I might have this something in my body, heart disease, cancer, and not even feel it. So we're setting ourselves up for, for presenting subluxation, okay? Um, so then I'll say, uh, let's see, where are we? Um, Right. So this is where, this was where I would say, so going back to answer this vital question for you, what is health? I'm actually going to give you the World Health Organization's very own definition of health, which I think is great. This, this definition they actually came up with back in the 40s and the 50s, but I think it was spot on. And it says health is the optimal functioning of your body. That doesn't say anything about how you look or how you feel, right? 
Health is the optimal functioning of your body. Now it goes on to say that it's not merely the absence, or it's not merely um, emotional. It's, it, health, health is the optimal function of your body, emotional, socially, spiritually, um, and uh, but, and physically, but not merely the absence of sickness or disease. Now that's why, watch, see, I, I didn't have my PowerPoint, I haven't been studying my PowerPoint, but that's why, I mean, my, my outline, that's why I print my outline off and I take it with me to my talk and I study it right before the presentation because I study that definition before my presentation. Now, I might go a month without giving that definition or a week or two weeks or whatever. Um, and so I might forget it a little bit. But if I study it right before my presentation, then I can go through it really fast. And I say health is the optimal functioning of the body, physically, spiritually, emotionally, physically, but not merely the absence of sy symptoms or disease. But let's just take that first part. Health is the optimal functioning of your body. There it is right there. We just defined health, right? So that's why it helps to have the outline and study it right before your presentation because you get little things like that, like the definition of health that you can memorize. And I don't know, I've never had, you know, Roberto tell me this or anybody tell me this, but I feel like if I can, boom, blurt out that definition of health, people in the audience are going, wow, this guy knows his stuff. Like he's done this before. He's, he's polished. He just blurted out the entire Webster's Dictionary of Health. Like he's obviously prepared, right? Even though I might have skipped half my actual outline and I wasn't very prepared, I knew the definition of health like the back of my, my mind, uh, like the back of my hand. So I think that's important. Anyway, um, okay, so guys, let me know if you have any questions. Pop them in the chat or in the um, comments below, and I will make sure that I get to them. I'm going to check them every once in a while to see where we're at and to see if any questions are here. Nope, all right, good. Okay, so that we're still in the body because now we, we said health is the optimal functioning of the body. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just defined health, but we have brought up a new question that if health is the optimal functioning of the body, what controls the function of the body? Because obviously, whatever controls the function of the body must be very important if that is the very definition of health. Now, I'm going to ask you guys, because I'm speaking to the audience here, okay? I'm going to ask you guys, what organ controls the function of every organ, other organ cell tissue in your entire body? You know this. What organ sends messages to every other organ cell tissue in your entire body? And I always do this with my hands, sends messages, because they can kind of see it's coming from the brain, right? Uh, and, and what organ controls, controls function? And somebody is going to blurt out the brain. I mean, that's just obvious, especially if I do this with my hands. Um, somebody's going to blurt out the brain. I'm going to be like, that's right, the brain. Your brain is constantly regulating every cell in your body by sending messages. I'm pointing at the autonomic nervous system. Your brain sends messages every second, trillions of messages to your heart, controlling your heart rate, your lungs, controlling your breathing. And when you sleep at night, you don't forget to breathe. Thank goodness. Did you know tonight when you eat the food that you're going to eat in front of you, your brain will coordinate 20 different organs to digest every piece of food. Then those, that food has to be assimilated into your bloodstream and taken to 70 trillion cells in your body in the exact right amount. That has to happen every second of the day or you don't make it through the day. How awesome is that? It's the body's a miracle. Would you agree with me? The body is an absolute miracle. And the function of your body is controlled by this nervous system. That's why it's so important what we do in our office is we help people take care of their spine and their nervous system. And when you come in for your examination, we're going to look at three different areas of the spine. Okay, so we're setting up the the three different areas of the spine section of the talk. I see see my presentation, I see it in sections here. So when we're setting up the three different areas of the spine section, I know I'm going to talk about, and this is part of my outline, I'm going to talk about global alignment. I'm going to talk about, wait, wait, I'm going to talk about the atlas first, then I'm going to talk about global alignment, then I'm going to talk about the discs. Those are the three areas of the spine I like to talk about. You can talk about whatever areas of the spine you think are important or however you want to do it. But I feel like if I talk about the atlas, the global alignment, and the discs, people can kind of get that, right? So I start with the atlas. I'm going to say when you come in, the first area of the spine we look to, probably the most important area of your entire spine is the atlas. Everybody put your finger behind your ear and push there. It might even be sore for some of you. This is what we call the Christopher Reeves bone. Anybody ever heard of Christopher Reeves? 
Yes, some of them have, right? Christopher Reeves was bucked off of a horse. He landed on his neck. He actually fractured the atlas, the first bone in his spine. It says in his autobiography that that the atlas moved. It shifted this far, the width of your pinky, into the spinal cord. Now, it didn't sever the spinal cord. It didn't completely uh, transverse or cut the, the spinal cord because if it did, he wouldn't have made it. He would have died. He wouldn't have just been paralyzed. In fact, if you sever the complete spinal cord, that's called decapitation. Okay, so nobody's ever survived complete severing of the spinal cord. It's important to note that that the atlas shifted into the spinal cord and put this much pressure on the spinal cord, width of your your finger damage into the spinal cord. Now that paralyzed him from that neck down because it acted like a dam in the river, right? If your brain's sending messages to every organ, cell, and tissue, and if I put a dam in the river here and those messages don't get through anymore, what's going to happen? He was completely paralyzed. In fact, he uh, the, the messages from his brain were not getting to his heart anymore. So he had to have a pacemaker and a defibrillator hooked up constantly to make sure his heart continued beating. He had to have a respirator that would breathe for him because the brain was no longer controlling his lungs. It says in his autobiography, people actually had to massage his colon so that he could go to the bathroom because those messages to the smooth muscle of digestion weren't working anymore either. So I pray that nobody in this room ever has a fracture into that area. It's a very vital, very delicate area. But if you just have a millimeter, just a little shift of misalignment in that atlas, and it's putting irritation in that area, that could be affecting the function of your entire body. Everything from hormone levels to digestion to heart, lungs to um, reproductive organs. So this this brain stem controls a lot of what we call your autonomic or automatic nervous system. Things that are supposed to happen automatically, they could be interfered with from pressure in that area. So it's so important that we, we are very gentle and very delicate and very uh, thorough when we do an examination. We check that atlas and we can correct those misalignments by applying very gentle pressures in the right directions and taking pressure off of the uh, brainstem and upper areas of the, of the neck. And we've helped a lot of people with severe migraines, headaches, um, and a lot of other um, issues as well. Uh, we actually, and this is where I try to, I try to tie in the person's symptoms with a story now. And I got this from, from Roberto too. And I'm like, there was a young lady that came in our office uh, in her 20s. She was having severe migraines that were getting so bad that on almost on a weekly basis, she would have to go into the emergency room. They would admit her because she would just be vomiting and dizzy and she couldn't function from these from the auras and the migraines that she was having. And so their neurosurgeon recommended that she have a surgery where they cut open the back of her head, they go in there and they burn, they solder the nerves in the back of her head. She wouldn't be able to feel her head anymore, but it would hopefully, they said, stop the uh, migraines that she was having. Okay. So she came to us and I said, well, you can always have that surgery. You can always go in and burn all the nerves in the back of your head. But once you do it, you can never go back. Okay. So let us just try this. You have, we found that she had a misalignment in her atlas that was causing these severe migraines. She got under care. We corrected that. She's doing so well today. She actually has two kids now. She does not have migraine headaches anymore. She never had to have that surgery. So um, this is absolutely first primary line of defense, something that you want to check, especially if you're having those types of migraines or headaches. Now, now that I, I don't, didn't used to do that, but now I add that because Roberto said, look, you're not telling stories about your patients and you're not tying them in to the misalignments that they might have. So somebody's sitting there with headaches and they're going, I wonder if my atlas is misaligned now. You know, I've had migraines. My cousin has severe migraines. I wonder if it's misaligned, right? Okay, then that's the first area of the spine. Now we check the second area. And this is why we take x-rays in my office because we want to check the spine from the front and from the side. If you're standing in anatomical position, arms to your side, feet hip width apart, looking straight ahead, which is how we take our x-rays, we should see that the spine is relatively straight from the front. Now, a lot of times we find tilt, shifts, translations, curvatures. These types of misalignments can put pressure on the nerves that exit. Each one of the nerve roots take messages to every organ, cell, tissue in your entire body. And this can happen at younger and young, younger ages. We, we had a little three-year-old girl who actually, uh, whose mom brought her in because she's having uh, colic and um, problems going to the bathroom. She only went to the bathroom once every two weeks. Now, I mean, the a bowel movement. She only had a bowel movement once every two weeks, a three-year-old. I can't even imagine that. I have three-year-olds of my own. I can't imagine that they would only have a bowel movement once every two weeks. Poor little thing. 
Now, after her first adjustment, she had a huge bowel movement. And then she would come back with her mom. She was coming in three times a week. And guess how many times she would go to a bathroom a week? And everybody says three times. And I'm like, yes. Now that happened for the whole first month. For four weeks, she would go to the bathroom three times a week. Now her parents were ecstatic because that was more than she'd ever actually had a bowel movement and went to the bathroom before. But then guess what? After that first month, she started. her body started kicking in gear. We got all the pressure off the nerves that go to those, those uh, smooth muscles in her stomach and it started functioning on its own. And now she's completely regular. She's doing awesome. She's growing up a healthy, strong little girl. How awesome is that? right? So we're going to check the spine from the front and from the side. We don't want to see uh, a straight spine. We want to see these natural curves and, and um, we want to make sure that there's no pressure on those nerves. Now, the third area of the spine is the discs. So when we're looking at our x-rays, we want to measure between every vertebrae, you should have a nice open disc space. That allows that um, the, the nerve flow to flow through those nerve roots and out those areas. Now, if your spine gets locked and fixated and it's not moving through a, a full range of motion, it begins to, those discs be, begin to dehydrate and that can cause what we call osteoarthritis or degenerative disc disease. So we want to, if that's there, we want to stop it as soon as we possibly can and we want to reverse it. If it's, if it's just beginning or if it's not there, we want to be able to prevent it. Um, and, and that's me. Like, um, I had, so I tell my story, uh, towards the end, but I, but I have, we have a lot of people, in fact, even myself that have shooting pains that go down their legs and the most commonly degenerative disc of the spine is L5 in the lower part, part of your back. So if you have loss of disc height in that area, you can have pressure on those nerves that shoot pain into your hips or down your legs. And we can help, it, just like chiropractic helped me, um, remove the pressure off of those nerves so that that pain goes away, right? Something like that. Uh, and like, again, it might change and it might be a little bit different for each time. So um, I'm going to check and see if we have any questions here, by the way. Cool. All right. So um, feel free, guys, also email me if you have any questions uh, when you watch the replay on this. So, all right, now we're going to move into our pre-close. All right. And so that's why um, I'm, I'm just looking at my um, outline here. But what I would do normally is I would say, look, and, and I used to use this and, and I may, may still use it sometimes, which is basically over the decade of being a chiropractor, I found that there are three different types of people. You know, number one is that person who, um, they, let's see, what are the three types of people? I would, I would say, um, Number one is the kind of person that has just had health problem after health problem after health problem. You might be this person or you might know this person. And unfortunately, you just get exhausted when nobody's there to help you, when nothing you're trying is working, and you just want to give up, all right? I want to encourage you. If you're that person today, never, never, never give up. That, that next answer to what you're, to what you're feeling or, or what you're experiencing might be just around the corner, all right? So keep trying, keep pushing forward, and never give up. The second time a person, especially the guys in this room, this is what we usually do, is we say, you know what, I appreciate my health, but eh, I feel fine. Or you might have a symptom and you say, ah, I, I can push through it, right? The problem with that is what happens to problems if we don't take care of them most of the time? Everybody's like, they get worse. Yes. And is a problem easier to fix when it's, uh, just starting or is it easier to fix once it's been there for years, right? It's easier to fix when it just starts. So don't wait. If you have an issue, come in. Even if you don't, it can take, it can be there for decades before you actually feel it. Get your spine and nervous system checked. And that's why I encourage you to be the third type of person. That's the person that says, you know what? I'm worthy to have great health right now. And I'm willing to take the action that's required to make sure that I maintain health for the rest of my life. And so that's why we do an examination and checkup that we call the wellness breakthrough examination in our office. Okay, so you want to name your examination and um, call it something, right? It's called the wellness breakthrough examination. Now, if you were to, let me ask you this, and then here's, we're moving into the pre-close, okay? We're getting ready to close, but the pre-close is where we set up and we invite them into our office. Now, this is very important. It's called the contrast question. The contrast question is where you would be like, compare it to a hospital. Okay, so you'd be like, let me ask you a question. If you were to uh, go to the hospital 
and or let me let me let me start off over. Okay, so this is what we do. This is the wellness breakthrough um, examination. It's two days in my office. The first day, you're going to sit down with me one on one. We're going to go over your health history. We're going to get uh, all your symptoms, gather your symptoms, so I can know exactly what's going on in your case. And then we're going to get what's most important. So a set of x-rays so that we can see inside your spine. We can see the alignment. We can see if there's any pressure on those nerves causing the symptoms that you're having or see if you have any pressure on your nerves um, and, and that might not be causing any symptoms yet, all right? That's the first day. Day two is the most important day. I call that my doctor's report to where you're going to come back. We'll show you how to read an x-ray. I'll even show you before and after x-rays and show you how we corrected the spine and others who might have had the same or similar types of alignments and symptoms as you had. And I'll give you my very best recommendations on how you can start care. And even if you don't start care, at least you're going to know exactly what's going on in your body and some things and some tips that you can do to uh, correct that and to help uh, experience great health throughout your life. Now, that examination is only $197 in my office, but that includes all of your x-rays. And I want you to think about it. What if you went and got two days worth of care and all your x-rays in, in, in a local hospital or emergency room? How much would that cost? Two days would be tens of thousands of dollars, right? Now, in, in our office, it's only $197, but because we're on a mission to make this area of Houston the healthiest area we could possibly be and to touch families and, and the lives of families, we're going to give you a discount. It's not $197 if you schedule that today. It's only $117. And the only thing that I ask is two things. Number one, if you do want that discount, please schedule it with my staff here tonight. Um, it's hard when we have people calling the office trying to tell us who was at the dinner and who wasn't, who gets the discount and who doesn't. So all I ask is that you make that appointment this evening. The only other thing that I ask is that if you do make that appointment, that you what? And everybody says, keep it right? Yes. So I'm showing them that please, if you make the appointment, be serious about it and make sure you keep it. Just saying that is going to lower uh, your no-show rate. Okay. Now to close, what I do is I'll tell them, now I just want to share and we just want to close by telling you a quick story. This is why I became a chiropractor. This is why I do what I do. And I tell them my story about how I had back pain and it was miserable and I went to emergency rooms. I almost went to a neurosurgeon and then chiropractic changed my life. And I was like, uh, who would not want to be a chiropractor and be able to help people with this type of pain? So I went to chiropractic school and then I tell him a year into chiropractic school, I got a phone call from my mom, from my brother saying that my mom passed away. And I'd already touched on this earlier, right? Um, so they know my mom passed away. And I said, I went back home. If any of you have ever been through this, you know, it's hard to go through your mom's things. And I went through my mom's overnight case. And this was a case. She kept it by her side all the time. It never left her side. And I was pulling out things from her overnight case. And I was pulling out prescription after prescription, and I counted 21 prescription medications that my mom was on at that time. And I realized that my mom, even though I had had a great experience with chiropractic and, and chiropractic had changed my life because of severe back pain, my mom had never been to the chiropractor. So I, 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 wanted her, I wondered what my mom's spine looked like. I, mu I knew it must have been a wreck. So I knew that she had been to local hospitals in our area and I wanted to see what her spine looked like. So I know that probably they had taken imaging or x-rays or something. So I took my white coat that they gave me in school so I could look important. I put it on. I went into the hospital. I asked the, the uh, desk if I could check out my mom's x-rays and imaging. And they said, sure. So they brought it to me. And I kept it. So I didn't check it back in. I, I didn't give it back to him. I always bring it, take it to my dinners. It's pretty powerful. I grab the, the set of x-rays. It's big, it's thick, it's heavy. And I tell him, look, there's probably a hundred thousand dollars worth of imaging here. Cause it's not just x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, nucleotide brain scans that are in here. And I sat down in front of a view box. It took me hours to go through these images one by one by one. But guess what? After looking at this entire stack of imaging, guess what is not in here? My mom's spine. My mom was a type 1 diabetic. She had neuropathy in her feet, Charcot joints. So there's x-rays of her knees, her ankles, and her feet. She went through um, uh, renal failure. Her kidney stopped working. So she had to go on dialysis. There's CT scans and organ scans of every organ in her midsection. And there's even a nucleotide brain scan for some reason in, in the stack. But there's not one picture of my mom's spine. First of all, because... In medicine, they're not trained to look to the spine for the cause of disease or to be even analyze properly spinal alignment. 
But secondly, because it's not their job. It's the job of a chiropractor to check the spine and make sure that the spine stays healthy. And that day, when I saw this, was the day that chiropractic went from a job to a mission for me. And we are on a mission to check as many people as we possibly can to let them know the health of their spine and to teach them how to maintain their spine because it's the one system that controls every function of your body. It's the most important system for the health of your body and the health of your family members. So I encourage you, take advantage of our checkup today, get scheduled, and I can't wait to see you in the office. And that's the close, right? So um, that changes again. If you watch my videos in the in the members area, they're not always exactly the same. If you came to my dinner this Monday, it's not going to be exactly the same as I'm presenting to you right now. It's going to be similar in the outline and the structure is going to be similar because I study the outline. And then I just try to get in, um, uh, in, in the zone whenever I'm in front of them. I know the outline. I know what comes next. So if I ever get stumped or kind of lost, I just go on to the next thing, right? Um, so anyway, I hope that helps. I took you through my entire outline. That's going to help me for this Monday going, um, you know, studying that outline and, and going over it with you. But I encourage you to just schedule your lunch and learn, schedule your dinner, go to a local, uh, restaurant that has a private room and just schedule it and start inviting your patients. And don't worry about being ready for the talk. You'll be ready. All right. You'll, you're already ready. Um, and then the closer it gets, you're going to kind of get nervous about it. So you'll get even more ready because you'll go over, trust me, before Monday even, I'm going to go over this outline again and again so I can be ready for Monday. And then I do it in two more weeks. I'll have another talk, uh, another dinner, and I probably won't look at it unless I have a lunch and lunch or something. I won't look at it again for two weeks, but then I'll look at it right before the dinner. And then the more you do them, the more talks you give, the more you start to master uh, your presentation, it becomes your own. And you'll tweak and change it as you go, just like I'm doing. And if you notice some of my older videos that I posted on here, um, it's changed even since then. It's it's a dynamic process that keeps getting better and better. All right, guys. So I hope that helps you to kind of structure your talk. Just remember opening, pre-frame, body, uh, pre-close, and then close. And, and then um, hopefully you can use some of those tips and strategies uh, when you're building that talk, I would actually just memorize or outline my talk and then go back and change it and tweak it to kind of fit you um, and your story. So uh, the opening, I I would use the Steve Jobs opening. I, if I were you, it's really, really good. Uh, the pre-frame, you want to make sure you're telling people that it's okay to ask questions and you want them to engage. The body is where I actually go through what is health, uh, it's function, what controls function, it's the spine and nervous system, my three areas of the spine right? Um, then the pre-close is where you're actually going to um, share with them your examination and then you give them a discount and the, and, or actually you do the contrast question. So you say like, if you're going to go to the hospital, how much do you think it would cost to get two days worth of care and, um, oh, and also report of findings and x-rays and all that stuff? Everybody's going to be like thousands, right? So that contrast question helps $117 seem like not very much. And then, and you could do, I used to do 47. I used to do, before that I did $20. So you can do whatever number that you want. I just wanted to make the quality of my patient better. And if they can pay $117 for the exam, they're more likely to be able to sign up in my opinion. So uh, we moved ours to $117 now. And um, then, then you would go through your clothes and uh, invite them in for the examination again at the close. So all right, guys, hope that helps. Um, hope you enjoyed the training today and uh, stay tuned for even more next week. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do next week? Um, ah, next week, we're going to go through the ergonomic PowerPoint and the ergonomic presentation for when you're setting up talks to do spinal health hygiene and ergonomic workshops, okay? All right, guys, thanks so much for being on. And if you have any questions, just hit me up on Facebook in the private members area or email or text if you want to. My phone number is at the bottom of all of our emails. So thanks so much. Have a great day. Have an awesome Wednesday and a, and a great rest of your week. Talk soon.